Good morning, and welcome to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church on this Sunday as we praise God together. I am Pastor Mark Beatty on behalf of Pastor Bonnie Lanny and all of us here at Holy Trinity. Welcome to our church. Welcome to worship this morning. As we continue this online-only worship, welcome also to all of our guests, wherever you may be. I love seeing in the comments section when guests are from various places and members, make sure to welcome them too. Remember, even though we're online worship, we are live together, so we are the gathered body of Christ here in this place. So when it comes time to things like the confession, when sharing the call to worship, sharing the Apostles' Creed, the prayers, the hymns, please, from where you are at home, sing the hymns, pray the prayers, let us say the creed together. We are doing that work of liturgy. But also in a unique way, if you happen to be joining us live, also let your comments and sharing the peace or welcoming each other be part of that liturgy too, as we connect together this day to God in worship. Our theme today for the message is the secrets of faith. So what is the secret of faith? We'll find out more about that <clears throat> in just a little bit. And also, you don't want to miss a worship here. You never know what surprise you may get uh, when you come or what you might miss if you weren't here. We are so thankful to welcome again Julie Koenig as our, as our uh, guest harpist. So thank you so much, Julie, for being here this day with us. Also, as we look today, we... We grieve still at the same time. This week was a long, hard week also for Holy Trinity as we formally then said goodbye on Thursday to David Lovich and then Friday to Shirley Gorley, both beloved long-term members of Holy Trinity. But we also remember the good news of eternal life, even in the midst of our grieving as well. Today, we also have one more thing to do too that's not quite so fun. And, uh, but I wanted to make sure to do this, even though we're online only, uh, Ray and Monica Bobek will be moving, and they're heading out just this August 14th, so this is their last Sunday to be with us here. Now, they're going to Candendon, Missouri. It's near the Lake of, uh, um, what is it, the, um, the Lake of the Ozarks area, kind of close to Lake of Ozarks, and they'll be living there. They'll be RVing. They'll be um, doing campground um, caretaking uh, as hosts, and... <laughs> And although we will miss them very much, and I want to be upset about them going, but it's for them doing all that, it's kind of like I said on Wednesday at Brown Bag Lunch, it's like being upset with a duck being in water. I mean, you know, you just might as well just celebrate it because it's, it's really a big part of who they are, and so we're so happy for them to be able to do that. They have made sure to let us know, though, too, they will be coming back to visit as well, so they'll still be connected to Holy Trinity. But we also want to have a brief farewell and Godspeed for them this day. Also, as we look forward, it's not happening quite yet, but for the call to worship, there's something else we want to be uh, today. Every day on Sundays for our call to worship, and Saturdays too, since I've arrived here at Holy Trinity, we have had the Psalm 118.24 for our call to worship. And Monica and Ray Bobek gave me this, which I have in my office every day too, so we're going to have this in just a moment uh, the words and themselves as we share our call to worship. So thank you again so much, Ray and Monica, for this. And of course, Monica was um, part of a sermon not too long ago. She has helped with quilting. Ray has helped for so many things. You will be a blessing wherever you are and whatever church where you end up. And so thank you so much for the gift of your ministry and the gift of just your personhood here in this church in this place. So now we have just a brief Farewell and Godspeed. Ray and Monica, as you leave our congregation, we bid you farewell. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said, I am going to send an angel in front of you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. And then also from Isaiah, thinking about the gospel text we have today and Jesus walking on the water and Peter sinking in, we have some water text from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. 
For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of his church. When you came to this congregation, Holy Trinity, we rejoiced to welcome you into the mission that we share as the people of God. In this community, you have come to know and to share in God's loving purpose for you and for all creation. God has blessed you in this community and God has blessed us through you. And so now we encourage you to continue to receive and share God's gifts in Missouri, united with us in the body of Christ that we are and in the mission that we all share together. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for Ray and Monica Bobeck and for the time we have shared with them. As they have been a blessing to us, so now send them forth to be a blessing to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we prepare our hearts and minds for our worship. We continue with our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
we continue with the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage around us and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear. And preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us read responsively together by whole verse, Psalm 85. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord and shall prepare for God a pathway. Amen. A reading from the book of 1 Kings. At Horeb, the mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant and thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces, 
before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after that, the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in an earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and he went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant and thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Yehu, son of Nimchi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shephat, of Abel Meheloa, as a prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Haziel, Yehu shall kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Yehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. After he had dismissed the crowds, Jesus went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are. The Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. At this time, I want to invite the children to be part of a special children's message. So children, if you want to get closer to the screen, wherever you are, that would be great. And of course, you are welcome, and I hope you are part of all of worship, but this is a special time just for you. Now, 
In today's world, this has been going on for quite a while, but as we go through the internet and we see YouTube and some of the most common videos, of course, some of the most millions of views are, it's not worship at Holy Trinity for a bunch of millions of views, it's actually cat videos, right? <laughs> cat videos seem to be the most popular. Now, I was a child of the 80s growing up, and of course, we didn't have all the cat videos, we didn't have the internet yet at all back in the 80s. But we had a lot of cat posters, there were cat posters of different things with clothes or whatever else, but one of the most common ones was of a little kitten. And it's a little kitten with his front paws kind of dangling like this, just grabbing on, holding onto a branch or a pull-up bar or something like that. And you can see his little back paws and, and his tail just hanging in the air. And the most common saying underneath was, hang in there. So that was what we had growing up. And I still remember... One of our seminary professors, this is, a, of course, a teacher for when I was becoming a pastor and learning how to become a pastor, who said to us, if we think about faith, remember one of those kitten posters where it's just barely clinging and hanging on with his front paws and just, just hanging in there. That's what we do with faith. We're clinging and holding on to God, just, just barely hanging in there. And so when we think about trusting God and thinking about faith, one image you can use is that little kitten in the cat poster. Now, as we think about trusting, too, when we think about faith, I also want you to be able to have trust in those godly people that are to help you, like your parents, your teachers, your pastors. But I'm going to tell you at the very same time to use your wisdom and to trust the Holy Spirit that sometimes will speak to you. And you might feel like kind of deep inside your tummy and your gut, or you might feel like a, a, a weighted feeling in your chest. Sometimes when something is wrong, because every now and then you may have an adult person in your life who you are called to trust who may not be a trustworthy adult. I have had, in my experience, both teachers in school and pastors who have betrayed my trust, and some not just personally for me, but I remember even in seminary, when I was near the end of graduation and I heard some of the things that a pastor had done who wasn't able to be a pastor anymore. So for the people in your lives that you trust and hold on to, have a sense of, of wisdom to discern who you can trust and hold on to those people for they are wonderful. But also trust the Spirit. If you have a sense deep inside, even if you can't think of what it is in your head, why this is wrong, trust that sense and trust that feeling. And remember also with this, Psalm 146. Now, some people say that Psalm 146 is right exactly in the middle of the Bible. I'm not sure if it exactly is, or even if it is exactly in the middle, if it means it's more important or not, but it's just a, a way to remember it. For Psalm 146, it says basically this, do not put your trust in mortals. Now, mortals are humans. They're people who only live for a certain while, and of course, we all die. That's people. It says, do not put your trust in people, but put your trust in the Lord your God. And so, even as we look to trust the people in our lives, I want to ask you to remember this, to always put the most trust as you hang in there with God. For God will always be there with you, and God will never lead you astray, and will never betray your trust. Thank you so much for coming here today, and in the midst of this pandemic, hang in there, and I look forward to seeing you next time around. Thanks so much for coming up. And now as we transition into our sermon time, I want to tell you about someone named Michael. Mike was about 18 years old at the time, young, scrappy guy, really thin, but also muscular. He was somewhat quiet and yet gregarious at the same time. He was at Lutheridge, one of my favorite places on the planet, when I was serving as a counselor there, when I was only a couple of years older than Mike, probably about 20, and in college. But that particular week, I was called not just to be with campers in the cabin, but to be a lifeguard at the pool, because I had water safety instructor, all those things. I was a collegiate swimmer. And I got an, a specific assignment, too, that was different than other times. Teach this camper, Mike, how to swim. Now, Mike was part of a group of campers at Lutheridge that have sometimes mental disabilities 
or um, developmental or physical disabilities, and they're there. It's a special, beautiful, wonderful group of campers that also have a lot to be able to teach us, too, about life and value and meaning. But it can also be a challenge sometimes as a lifeguard to make sure that everyone is able to be safe. And that's what it is about Mike. Mike didn't have exactly the same filter that some of the rest of us would have. And here's the story from what evidently happened last year, the year before at camp, with another lifeguard and Mike. So evidently, they're over there in the deep end of the pool, and Mike was just around the, the edge in the concrete outside the pool, just playing with other kids and other adults who were there. And people would, would come and jump off the diving board and, and, and get in the water in the deep end. It was about 9 or 10 feet deep. And after a while, even though you know, Mike didn't know how to swim, he just walked right up to the diving board and jumped right in in the deep end, and he sunk like a rock right to the bottom. Thankfully, luckily, the lifeguard was watching because it wasn't any big flailing or anything else he did, and when he was at the bottom, he was just motionless, just there at the bottom of the pool. And the lifeguard looked down and, and what's going on? And then the lifeguard jumps in and, and brings up Mike, and when Mike gets to the surface, <sighs> You know, he was out of breath, and, and the lifeguard said, Mike, I thought you didn't know how to swim. And Mike said, I don't. And the lifeguard said, well, well, Mike, then why did you go on the diving board and jump in the deep end of the pool? And Mike said very calmly and very matter-of-fact, because I knew you'd save me. <laughs> That's why I taught Mike how to swim. But his story of that just that straightforward, complete belief reminds me of this story of faith and, of course, the water, too, with Jesus walking on the water in today's Gospels and in, in, in today's Gospel and the disciples all being afraid, wondering if it's a ghost, and then Peter going to walk out, but then Peter sinking in, and Jesus, like that lifeguard, having to reach in and pull up and save Peter. Well, what is it about today's gospel that makes this such a powerful story? Because if we take a step back and, and look a little more at this gospel, there's not really a, a healing that takes place in this gospel, and, and there's not really a, a teaching of Jesus as rabbi that takes place in this gospel. There's not really a, a proclamation of the kingdom or you know, something else about proclaiming the good news or sharing it. They're not those spiritual kind of things or ministry kind of things we think about for a gospel. So what's so important about this gospel? What's the, what's the nature of this? And I think that's the key. This is a gospel about nature. To remind us that, that yes, Jesus is that Lord of healing, but not just of healing and not just of teaching and not just of the kingdom of God in heaven, but that this, Jesus, the Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, is also the Lord of creation, all of creation. Even the water, the winds, and the wave obey him. And that is the message of saying that truly this is the Son of God. And it's a both and kind of thing, which is good Lutheran theology. We have law and gospel. We have word and sacrament. And here we have Lord whose kingdom is not of this world. This is our King, Jesus, and yet who also at the very same time is the Lord of all creation. So I think that's part of the power of this story to let us know in our fear too that no, what, no matter what realm we're talking about, the spiritual or the physical, Jesus is our Lord and Savior. So what is the nature then of faith, too, of believing? When we cling on to that faith and just hold on, what is the nature of it? And one of the things about it that I think we sometimes forget, but we need to remember, is it's not just believing in something or believing that you can do something. Faith, biblical faith, is intertwined inextricably with God. We don't have faith as a concept, an idea, a belief, or a thing without a connection to and with God. That's what makes it a belief of faith. God is intertwined in the midst of it. So if we think to ourselves, well, you know, I just want a little red pony, and, and God will give me a pony. That's not faithful thinking. That's magical thinking, right? And we just want God to come along with us. And then as we grow up and get older, 
and perhaps the little red pony, and sorry, I'm a car buff, um, becomes the little red pony car with 400 plus horsepower that we really want to get and we want God to be able to give it to us. That is not um, something of faith. That's, that's an act of you. And you, Bob, Fred, or whoever wants the pony car, is hoping that God comes along with you. Now, we know that and we think we know that stuff. And yet, there are these times where we have all these thoughts and beliefs and they're really just our own and we want God to go along with us and we call that faith. But if God is not connected, if we're not turned to God, it's really not a faithful thing. It's just something about us. Here's an example of, of a faithful belief. We trust and cling, even if we can't understand, even if we don't know how it's going to happen. But when we pray that Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And if we hope for and long for and believe, yes, Lord, in the middle of this messy world, I don't know how it's going to happen but I trust, even where I can't see it, even where I don't know how it's going to happen, I trust that your will will be done. Please work through me. Have me be part of that will happening here today in ways I can't even figure out how it'll be, but I'm open to you. That's, that's an act of faith pointed and focused toward God and the way that God has called us and the way that Jesus has taught us to pray. Do you see the difference between that and the 400 horsepower pony car? But sometimes, and especially now, even amidst the virus, I'm getting people to say, you know, we don't need to wear this stinking mask, and, and this is about faith, and people aren't trusting God, and, and God's going to save us. That's not an act of faith. That's an act of you being frustrated about the whole situation, perhaps listening to some TV that's bothering you too or something on the Internet, getting all flustered about it and wanting to go ahead or maybe also wanting to have that family reunion because you miss each other so much, which is great. But is Jesus calling you specifically to go to that reunion right here, right now, and then not wear masks and then be too close together and hug each other? Is Jesus really calling that? That's what you want. But we have so many times now where people are wanting what they want, and then they're trying to make it as if it's an act of faith. Well, God will protect me. That sounds closer to kind of putting God to the test. And if we look back, it is actually, and beware too, because that's what Satan wants to do. Satan wants us to be prideful, to be reactive, to get all emotional, and just to, just to go out there and be reckless and be destructive. And that's what he tried to get Jesus to do. We can go back and look in the very scripture. One of the most beautiful psalms of all the psalms, Psalm 91, to protect us from the deadly pestilence. And pestilence can be translated from Hebrew into epidemic. It is so applicable. And this idea further on, you know, that his holy angels will have guard over you, lest you dash, dash your foot against the stone. That's the very text that Satan uses in Matthew chapter 4 and the temptation of Christ there where, he, where the devil brings Jesus up to the pinnacle of the holy temple and the holy city and says, throw yourself down for the, as is written that God's angels will cast you lest you dash your foot against the stone. He's quoting Psalm 91 to try to goad Jesus into being unnecessarily risky for an empty purpose and saying God will protect him. And what does Jesus say in response to Satan? Also, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Faith is about, not about what we want, most want, and we're trying to get God to go along with us. Faith is about God calling us and us as God's children reaching out, even when we can't see or understand, even when we're afraid, and taking that leap toward him. That is faith. We can see that too spelled out into, in the gospel today. So here's Jesus walking on the water. The disciples are all afraid. And Jesus says, it is I. Do not fear. And then Peter says, well, Lord, if, if it is you, then, then command me to come to you. Does that sound like faith from how we're defi defining it? Where Peter says, Lord, if it is you, it sounds almost like a little testing, right? Command me to do this. No, that's what Peter wants. Peter's anxious. Peter's afraid. Peter wants to be reassured. This is what Peter wants. It's not an act of faith. It's an act of Peter. Until this happens, one more word. Jesus then responds to Peter and says, 
come. Now, now it's an act of faith. The Lord is calling Peter out of the boat and into the water. And so when Peter takes that first step, it is an act of faith because he's not stepping into just what he wants for himself. He is stepping into that risk and that vulnerability of how and where the Lord is calling him. And he takes that risk, not knowing what's going to happen in the water, and steps forward. And at first, he seems to be walking, which is amazing for a human being to be able to do. But then he sinks down, having, having been afraid again, thinking of all the, the wind and how great it is. And in the Sea of Galilee there, it's like, a, it's like a bowl. It's a huge lake, but it's a bowl the way it's shaped. And when wind comes in, it can have huge swells that make it truly like a sea. No wonder he was afraid. Wouldn't we also be afraid in the middle of that sea with those huge swells? And it is Jesus that has to be able to pull him up. But there is Peter, right in the midst of it. What makes his faith? Even when he's sinking, we might ask ourselves, well, maybe, maybe if Peter had that undying beautiful, naive belief that Mike had at the lifeguard. Maybe that would have done it. Maybe if Peter had been just stronger mentally, maybe if he'd been stronger physically, maybe if he had a stronger heart, and maybe I could do this when I lose my faith. I just need to have more of this. And that's what brings us to the last part, which is the secret of faith. And it's a secret that's actually an open secret. Theologians all know about this already. I'm not bringing something brand new, but what happens is we get in our minds and our hearts this idea about faith and how for us to have more faith, and then we make the secret, which is really open, into a pink elephant in the room that's not even mentioned anymore, and it truly becomes a secret, a forgotten secret, as we struggle ourselves through faith. So I want to share with you that secret today to remember it and give you a scripture from that too, which reminds us that in the end, it really is not a secret. The secret of faith is not about what more Peter can do there, for he is human. And if we remember even a little bit further in Matthew chapter 19, I believe it starts around verse 25. You've got the disciples just struggling, wondering as Jesus is talking about how difficult it is for human beings to be saved. And the disciples say, well, the Lord, who then can be saved? And Jesus says, for mortals, it is impossible. But for God, all things are possible. And that is the hint for our secret of faith. It is not how much more Peter can do that is the secret and the power and the miracle of faith in this story. The secret of faith in this story is the hand of the Lord that comes in and picks up Peter beyond the waves. And the hand of the Lord in our lives when we reach out to the Lord as the Lord is calling us, and even if we don't know how to get in this water, we can't see the depths of it, it is that hand that picks us up and lifts us up. That is the secret of faith. And here is one of various scriptures, too, to describe it, but it describes it so succinctly in Ephesians 2, beginning at verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift. It is not the result of works, so that no one may boast. The secret of of faith is that in the end, in its essence, it is a gift from God. A gift from God to us humans who still struggle with our fear and our shortcomings, who still, even if we had the courage to begin walking in the water, will sink down. The gift of faith is that the hand of the Lord is there with us and will be there with us always. And that gift of faith is there throughout our lives. And as we remember back to, to Shirley and to David, who had just passed before us, we remember as we are willing to take those leaps of faith in our lives to our Lord, 
to our eternal lifeguard, even out in the water, out from the boat, and out from the diving board. That when we start to sink, which we do in our human fear, and we cry out, Lord, save us, that as we reach out, it is the very hand of the Lord that pulls us up over all the waves and all the wind, that pulls us beyond each hospitalization, that pulls us beyond that pain of the divorce and everything else that we're still hurting from, that pulls us from even cancer. And yes, when those things happen in this life and we come even to death, it is our Lord, as we remember with Shirley and David, who pull us even beyond the waves and the wind of death itself, that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus. And the hand of the Lord will never betray our faith and will hold on to us forever. That is the gift of faith. So may we not just jump in the water on our own with where we think we want to go and hope, hope the lifeguard might be there. But when we look to our eternal lifeguard, who is the Lord, who is our shepherd, may we listen in faith. And when Jesus calls to us and says, come, yes, May we have the courage, even in the middle of our fear, to jump out of that boat, to jump off the diving board, to jump in the water, knowing that even if we might sink, the hand of the Lord will be there to guide us, lead us, and pull us back up over the waves, no matter what may come in this life and forever. That is the power of faith. That is the miracle of faith. That is the true gift of of faith and our good news today. Amen. We join our voices together as one with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for your whole church throughout the world. Give courage in the midst of storms so that we see and hear Jesus calling, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of all creation, protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the nations and their leaders. In you, steadfast love and faithfulness meet, and righteousness and peace kiss. May all no nations know the peace that is the fruit of justice and the justice that is the path to peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all those in need in any way. Lord, sometimes it feels as if the wind and the waves of worries, frustrations, and insecurities are overcoming us. When we feel as if we are sinking, Lord, help us to remember that you are always reaching out a hand to us to pull us up beyond the waves. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our congregation. You have gathered us as your people, and we thank you for this precious gift. We pray for students and teachers preparing for the new school year and for those struggling with unexpected hardships. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear, O oh Lord, the prayers of your people, which we offer before you now, both spoken aloud and from the silence of our hearts. We pray for the Lovich family, the Gorley family, the Apple family. We pray for your love and your comfort. And we ask that your hand would restore all those affected by disasters, natural and man-made. We especially pray for all those affected by recent storms and those affected by the explosion in Beirut Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks, O God, for the saints of the whole church from all times and places, and for the saints in our lives and in our community whom you have gathered to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, and the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. That open secret that our Lord Jesus is always reaching out a hand to help us brings us deep, deep peace. May that peace be with you always. And also with you. Let's share a word of peace. Peace be with you wherever you are. Peace. 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 Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
And now we continue with our tithes and our offerings. We give you thanks for your continued faithfulness and giving. It is nearing the end of summer and uh, typically offerings uh, go down in the summer. So we, we give thanks for you. We encourage you to continue to give faithfully. Uh, if you are a visitor, we are grateful for your gifts as well. But if you choose not to give to Holy Trinity, we ask that you uh, give to some ministry somewhere. Giving back, we first give, we give back what God has first given to us. receive God's blessing. May God go ahead of you to guide you, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you that deep peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.